nice scene of St Kilda here. This is along the dog beach and managed to find a nice little place in the grass to do a painting. And I, I like the, the light reflecting off some of these boats. I want to get this in before the sun goes down. So let's put in a bit of the, uh, let's have a look here. Basically the, the area where the sky meets the water. Okay, just generally like that. And uh, we can start putting in, I think anyway, some of the sand. There's like a bit of sand coming in like this. And really when you're doing plein air painting, you, where the composition starts and ends, that's something that you really have to figure out as you go. Uh, because, I mean, you can just go really wide or you can, at the end of the day, pick a small area of the composition. Okay, so that's a bit more of the water, uh, the sand, sorry, coming in like that. Okay, so these, these little bits here are just sand. All right, we'll have to work on this a bit more, put some water maybe running through the sand there as well. It's not exact. Okay, good. And I'm gonna put in some, I'm gonna put in some boats. Before I do, right in the background, you can see this building just at the back of the jetty, and I'm going to indicate, I'm going to indicate it slightly, okay? Like this, there, yeah. just on the edge. Uh, that's kind of the jetty that goes out, okay? So I can go ahead and indicate this, just a line running across. Uh, this building does need to be grounded, so this helps to ground it a touch. And uh, you know, get that jetty coming in to the left. Like that good. The building. Let's get in this building. Off the background, I've kind of enlarged it a touch. Difficult to see it really from this distance, but uh, simplify it down. Simplify it down like that. I don't want it to be a huge feature. And in front, of course, we've got all these boats everywhere. I'm going to get one in. I'm actually going to have to shift some of these around. I'll shift one. I'll make one about here, a larger one. Okay. There. There we are. A larger boat here in the front. Okay. And what you've got to focus on is just the shape of the actual the boat itself they have to be quite sharp and detailed in relation to the softer shapes around it okay because we've got a lot of water a lot of natural bits and pieces in here you can even put up a mast as well I don't know if that one belongs to that boat even something like that okay another boat here the, the interesting thing is that a lot of them just overlap so you just really have to apply, apply what's happening in there, but you don't need all too much detail. Okay. As you get into the background, some of them get real small. They get pretty small. Okay. Another one, another one. I mean, the overlapping shapes make a difference, and you know, with the the mass, they're really quite light and. Uh, yeah, just like pretty much white and so we're gonna have to use potentially a bit of gouache at the end to bring them back in or if you've got a, a, a liner of some sort Change some of these so that they're the direction they're facing perhaps in this direction as well some boats you have like kind of facing this way Okay, oops like That so many of them just like this and as we get sort of to the edges of the painting I don't want to emphasize them too much I want to put in a figure here where there's a lady walking right in front and I'm gonna just put her head in quickly and just quickly sketch the outline of her body and uh, the dog she's got like a dog that she's walking around here just a quick indication Simple, 
simple sort of indication of the dog. Uh, but she's walking forwards in that direction. We can fix that up, uh, create a bit more detail in just a moment. But I think it's important for these particular scenes to be adding in some foreground and uh, details and bits and pieces going on because there's not a whole lot of detail in the background. I'm changing that up a bit. Shadows are running towards the left. So that's why I've just indicated a bit of that shadow. Okay, I'm just going to colour in the bottom part of the body. See if I can just um, redo that. Actually, there's something not so not so right about that. Okay, there we go. Um, that was her head, wearing a hoodie, maybe an arm coming out here, like that. Um, she could be carrying a bag here, for instance. You know, just walking across the beach I'm hoping someone comes across otherwise I'm gonna have to make some more people up let's see we do have some people that are out here really far out like on the back end near the this little sandbar and we can emphasize some of this so here's a person they're just standing out here couple another person there standing out in the back of that sandbar and this helps to bring a sense of scale into the into the scene so that we don't have just this larger figure here we've also got stuff going on in the background okay the figures at the front you really gotta detail a bit more than the figures at the back okay but the figures in the back mind you are, are just as important there's a guy that's kind of kneeling down with his dog I think that's what he's doing anyway, down on the right hand side and I'm just going to get a little impression of him doing that. There. Doing something here, I don't know what he's doing. Could be his dog or something like that. Just doing something there, just leaning over. Okay. And um, just put in another person walking across, I think I'll put her here, around the uh, left side of the scene, so that we can get in. A bit of, a bit more detail. Okay, that's the side of her arm. And uh, the body, like that. And a leg coming forwards. This leg going backwards. You've got to be quick when you're doing this, I'll tell you that. You, you're under a lot of pressure because, I wouldn't say pressure, but there's an urgency. That's for sure. And this person, this lady's a bit closer to the front of the scene. So she appears a bit larger than the figure to the right. So scribbled in, there you go, scribbled in, I think she might be looking at a phone or something like that, who knows. There we go. There we go, so we've got someone walks to the left, okay, here. Um, and one thing I've remembered is we actually are sitting in this area that has some shrubs and a bit of grass and stuff, so I will just indicate a bit of this, just to make sure I put on a, she's holding a bag or something, I'm going to just colour in a little bag on the back of her like that. Uh, but here in the foreground of course we've got a bit of this, this kind of shrub, shrub sort of stuff here. This is going to help to create a bit of the foreground. Now I don't see any rocks or anything here. There are some larger shrubs that are darker, but I don't see any rocks. And I'm kind of tempted to put one in. There are a few bits and pieces here in the foreground. Uh, don't need to, but thinking what else can we do? Also, you'll find that the reflections of the people as they walk along the beach here, they come through the water just below here. So I'm just going to quickly remind myself to add a couple of these little reflections in here. Not only that, but the reflections of the masts. Okay, some of them run through the water like that. This is really going to indicate that there is water there. Little things like that. So, we've got reflections of the figures, people, reflections on the water. Okay, and just having a look around. There's really not a whole lot else that we 
need to add in. Uh, we can keep on going. I can probably do something over here, which is add in some houses. Okay, I want to do that just to yeah, just make it look a bit more interesting. There, I've picked out a building I spot off in the distance, and I will just I don't know improvise, get it in. There's some kind of dome there off in the distance like that okay some trees off in the background there okay bit of shadow on the left side of the building there windows the rest of it doesn't matter just put the roof in or something like that okay this way it just looks a bit more interesting and it might almost be done with the drawing Tempted to add in some more bits and pieces in there, but I, I think this is the right amount of detail to get started with the painting. So, first things first, I'm going to pick up a larger, medium sized, or larger mop brush. And let's get in a bit of cerulean for the sky. A bit of cerulean for the sky. A lot of water, I'm talking about 90% water, 10% paint. Uh, really light. I'm starting at the top of the painting, like this, like that, okay, lots, lots of water, and dragging this down the page, okay, as we kind of go further down, um, I also want to be adding in more water, so uh, the top of it I'm making a touch darker, like this, and then as we move down, all I'm doing is just adding in a little bit of water to this mix. It's a little bit tricky because we're outdoors and I don't have a proper palette with me. But as you can see, I'm just following, just carrying this line of water downwards. And by doing this, by doing this, you end up with, as you add more water, a little bit extra uh, lighter wash down at the base. And so you get this graded wash as it moves down like this. Nice little braided wash. Okay? And this is really important when you're painting a landscape like this to get this in. It's going to make it look more realistic. Okay? And that looks about right. Okay, probably a little bit weak, but. I can also, we can also do things like add in some clouds. I've just picked up a bit of this grey. I've got some grey left over on the palette. Um, wipe this off a touch and let's see if I can, I don't know, just feather in a little bit of these grey clouds running across the scene like this. Okay, It's going to look more interesting if I do this. The sky is not completely blue. We do have some, yeah, just these wispy grey clouds running across in some parts. So look at that, just a little bit of grey and this will blend in nicely, it will melt in, okay, there's a larger one coming across the top like that, uh, but down the bottom you've maybe got some smaller ones, little, little clouds here, okay, and this will nicely blend in because we've got wet paper, wet paper, best time to do it, really, it's the only time to do it. So we've got the sky wash in, and the next thing I want to do now is work on a bit of the sand. So I uh, think I'll pick up just a smaller brush, tinier brush, and a smaller mop brush. And let's get in some combination of yellow ochre and a bit of buff titanium. Uh, we've got uh, Naples yellow. But basically, I just want a dulled down yellow. Okay. And let's test this out. Let's test it out around about here. Okay. Not bad. Probably more yellow, yellow ochre in there. Yep. Good. And I'm kind of carrying this across where this kind of, uh, what you call it, the sandbar finishes off over here. Okay. 
I also want to make this maybe a little bit stronger. Okay, like that. And one thing I find as well is not just yellow, but there's kind of some browns and things in there as well. Okay. So I'll just get in a bit of that first. Okay. And then let's get in some more. Coming down where the figures are here at the front as well. Cut around some of the figures. There. Like that. just pick up a larger brush for the time being to do this here okay very light still looking at mostly water in this mix uh, but it's slightly a little bit thicker a little thicker paint it's this paint here perhaps a bit of, a bit of brown a tiny bit of brown in here we need some of that as well because there is some little touches of brown running through near the water here continue on with this yellow down all the way into the foreground here carry that down all the way to here there's these little shrubs closer to the front okay get that in in one go I don't want to fiddle around with this section too much okay good now next part we want to put in some of the water and I'm doing this now because I think it's best that the area that we did, that we painted before the sand and what have you has dried off a touch so that way the, the, the water isn't going to run all too much and it's just reflecting the sky which is cerulean blue but it is a teeny bit darker a teeny bit darker than the sky I'm gonna make it so let's go ahead I'm going to just put in a bit of it here. Okay. Look, one thing I forgot to do was get in a bit of the yellow for the building here in the background. To the left. Okay, just some yellow there. And here as well. Okay. Before I forget some of that colour. Dab that off a touch as well. Okay, good. Back to the cerulean blue here. some other blues in there as well but mainly just cerulean okay um, and I want to make it just a, a touch darker than the sky so that it stands out okay but what we're doing also as you notice I'm cutting around cutting around some of the boats and the shapes here in the distance okay. cutting around so we leave the white of the paper difficult otherwise to get back the white colour of those boats. Okay, coming down, let's put in a bit of more colour down the base here, um, cutting around the head of some of these figures and other figures running around. Okay, uh, I want to be careful as well because I don't want all that yellow to just disappear. Okay, so what a light touch you're going in okay I've noticed also there is some water running through here so I'm just going to indicate a bit of this in here kind of like a mucky water and then I find the cerulean blue when you have it with yellow ochre it, it mixes very nicely you don't create too much of a mess because uh, that yellow ochre is kind of more desaturated compared to say compared to say a uh, Naples, uh, not Naples yellow, but a Hansa yellow. Okay, and notice how I'm letting it mix, parts of it just mix in with the yellow. Okay, we want that. And this is coming down, mixing with the, the sand further down as well, like this. Okay, doing its thing. Now in the foreground, I'm going to pick up a bit of, I don't know, some of this other colour, a bit of this. Uh, yellowish brown colour 
and uh, while the paint is still wet I just want to get in a bit of uh, you know, some of these softer brush strokes indicating the shrubs in the foreground this is going to help give the painting a sense of uh, depth as well okay this is basically where I'm sitting in this area in the foreground so you want to make it come out of touch okay you know, touch like that good and you're going to get some sharper edges down the base if it's already dried kind of like what I'm, what's happening with mine at the moment okay but by this point you should have something that looks like this like a, it all joins together but you can still see some form and make a bit of sense out of what is going on in here. Now, another thing I want to do, a little trick I like to do, is to pick up a bit of greyish paint off the palette, and I'm just going to flick this onto the paper to create some little, I don't know what they are, but like footprints or whatever on the, on the um, sand, like that. And this, I'm doing it in such a way that it doesn't look too obvious. Okay. But we can get a little bit of contrast in the sand. I've accidentally put some into the sky, but it doesn't matter. Okay? Something like that. Normally if I'm back home, I'll hold my hand over the top of that. Okay? But we've got a little bit of interest here. Okay, so when painting sand, you know, even if it's just yellow sand, there's bits and pieces inside you know all right and we'll leave this to dry for a little bit okay so this is almost dried off now and I'm gonna start putting in some details for the figures and uh, really I mean you've got a lot of details running through there I'm gonna actually you can do this sort of thing as well see I'm just scratching the paper with my thumb and bringing out some indications of some shrubs or whatever because that bottom part of the paper has already started to dry. This helps me to get a bit of texture and uh, stuff going on here. Okay. Make it look a bit more like the foreground. Like that. Yeah. You'd be surprised what a few little marks like this can do. Okay. I won't overdo it though. Okay, uh, righty, that's enough. Let's put in some details with the figures. I will firstly go in with the legs. And I'm going to mix up a bit of brown and a bit of blue. A bit of cerulean blue and a bit of brown. Get a nice dark, juicy sort of colour. And we'll place in the legs of this person first, potentially. Okay, like that. I want to be quite deliberate with it. Like this. Okay, there's the, kind of like the legs there, and uh, of course you also want to get in this shadow that's running across the ground. Connect that shadow up with the body, like that, okay, there, a bit there potentially as well. If you get a bit mixing into the water, that's actually a good thing, I don't mind that. It makes it look more joined on. And here's the dog here, we could put on a couple of legs, simple legs there as well. I don't need to have too much detail for the dog, but um, the tail there, the head of the dog, something like that. It looks like a dog. Okay, hopefully it doesn't spread too much, but that looks okay. Um, the, the darks really in this scene um, really brings everything together. bag or something this person's holding there yeah. the left um, okay I think they this person could do with a bit of hair a bit of brown not brown I could just chuck a bit of that onto the head and um, create a bit more interest there um, perhaps some red to the face too. So a touch of put a bit of pink here and a bit of white. A bit of pink and white or red and white really to make up a little pink. 
there, that could be the face of this person here as well, the side of the face, this person here, okay. Let's get rid of some of that water, Let's see if I can put in a bit of, a tiny bit of blue here as well, I just want to soften off this darkness a little. And this person to the left here, let's start working on that person. Just get a bit of darker colour, a bit of brown, and a bit of blue just mixed together. Okay. Brown and blue. And I'll put in the leg coming forwards like this. Okay. And a bit more darkness like this. There leg coming towards the back there and you, look the paper hasn't completely dried yet so you're f actually finding that like especially on this bit here it's melting in but don't panic just continue on and, and uh, do what you need to do okay hand coming out looks like there's a hand coming out to the front like that okay I'm tempted actually a lot for a lot of this just to leave the white in for the uh, for the figures. And I think it's just going to look better if I leave the white showing through. It just to me it looks more interesting. Looks like something going on in there and makes it look like they, they stand out better. So if I can leave out a bit of that it's actually I think that's actually preferable. So that could be a person here and just put in a bit, of, a bit more detail. Okay. There. bit of darkness for the head like that and we've got these figures in the background these are going to be quite tricky to draw to paint in actually because uh, yeah we've got quite a lot of quite a lot of stuff going on back there I don't have to redo this it's run into the water a little bit for that figure on the right doesn't matter and this is one of those things you've got to deal with when you're painting plein air you're going to have a lot of this stuff that just runs into each other and um, doesn't really doesn't really look the best, but you can still make out what's going on. Okay, a couple of people back there, just the legs. So we need the legs, and then the reflection of them in the water, like this, running downwards. Okay, so you've got a little bit of that reflection of the figures. There's another one here through the water here as well. Um, I do notice as well near the the edge of the water there is a bit of a little bit of um, outline. Let me just put in a touch of earth and color or something in here. Some more water, a little bit more water. It's kind of like an earthen mix to bring out some of the contrast of this bit of land here, a bit of the sand. Sorry here. So you kind of got these little reflections of the people that are running down. Not, not perfect, but you've got something. Okay. Even here in the foreground, you find there's actually some of this brown sort of color in the uh, in the sand here. Okay, near the edge of the water. So I, why not just emphasize a touch of that in, in places? There's a person here. I, I'd forgotten about that person. Just doing something or another. Who knows? Got rid of them anyway. Here, um, the bottom of the boats, I, I can see like there's a touch of darkness at them at the bottom. So we can actually pick up a bit of grey or whatever colour you've got on the palette. Um, I'm just picking up whatever dark colour I've got mixed together and just line the bottom of the boats a touch with this darker color got some purple maybe that might work better okay just to bring them out a little anchor them to the ground uh, not the ground of the water okay and then we do it here we do it here maybe uh, here 
here, okay, here, just in certain places it's a good idea to do that, okay, and also I found a place here on the left where we have some of this, this jetty that's going in, and there, there is darkness around the jetty, around here, okay, behind the boat, behind some of these boats, Right. and um, some downward strokes like this downward little strokes which uh, helps to indicate the bottom of the jetty okay, like that and I can just draw another line at the base like this okay so it kind of looks like a jetty um, another bit of the jetty here as well and I'm using very dark colors and using a lot of lots of um, thicker colors to do this okay, thicker colors there oops a bit too much there i'll just really jig that there you go. okay good uh, okay right oh a lot of the light is starting to disappear really at the moment and what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use some really bright contrasting colors some contrasting colors for the for some of the boats bring out some colors that I like on them I've got a bit of Hansa yellow Hansa yellow and I hope I don't regret doing this but I'm going to put it into this one here Bit of that yellow for that boat. Okay. Lift some of it out. Okay, that's a little bit of a boat. Um, most of them are pretty much just a kind of white colour. yellow, I think anyway, just makes it look a bit more interesting, some of them anyway, so that they're not all the exact same, okay, I'm going to put in maybe some other people in the background somewhere, Where can I put in another person? I just think, maybe here. Closer to the foreground. Maybe here. Okay. A little bit more colour. Brown and blue mixed together and quite a darker sort of colour as well. This could be a person just walking into the scene to the uh, from the right hand side of the painting okay a bit of a bit of a shadow running to the left as well like this All right. something different um, okay just a last minute addition I didn't actually intend to do this. Maybe this person has a dog or something up the front as well. I don't know. Uh, well, we can get rid of that actually. Didn't like that. Okay. And uh Got a little bit of gouache, a little bit of white gouache. Bring back some greys or something on, on some of these people or figures. Um, I really want to get in some of the white masks off in the background, but it's tricky because I don't have any proper gouache here. Um, I, I just have some dehydrated 
stuff which I can just try to try to um, bring get rid of the contaminants and try Let's see what we can do because I want to get in some of the masts of those boats and uh, little details if possible it's going to be tricky okay let's see what this will do not really much so probably have to go back later and and uh, figure this out okay and I'll actually add on uh, proper white gouache over on the top.